Hello. The Balancing Mechanism Reporting Service, or BMRS, is the primary mechanism by which National Grid informs utilities, trading entities and interested parties about the UK power system. It is used extensively by this market to make trading decisions to understand system dynamics and also as a reporting platform, and historically the data was available through a high-grade data feed, which provided near real-time updates but was not simple to set up and expensive, or through a free service on vmreports.com which was delayed but admittedly was easy to access. So moves to open up the system and the market in general to be more transparent led to the release in December 2014 of a set of application programmable interfaces or API which enable market participants to receive BMS data easily and securely. So initially only remit data was available but for over the last year so through 2015 and 16 a full set of data has been made available. Thus it's possible for anyone essentially, uh, certainly trading operations, to find out physical performance about power stations, demand response, uh, prices and volumes of uh, grid trades and actions, uh, along with data relating to the wider market, so wind, weather, interconnector flows, etc. Essentially, anything that you'd really need to set up and establish a trading operation in the UK, uh, you can now do as your basis from this. Uh, data source and data feed. So to access the data we need to set up a free account with Alexon and this generates an API key. I won't be covering that but essentially uh, head over to Alexon's website, uh, punch in your details and then you'll get the key in your profile. And uh, we then use this API key uh, to uh, as part of the URL which we pass to the back-end database um, and then that will then respond either with an XML or a CSV file. So you can see here that uh, we generate this URL, pass in your API key, pass in the optional parameters, and we'll cover these uh, in a worked example in a second, but this is in the API guide here. Again, this is the guide that Alexon provides on their website. Uh, they pass in the settlement period and the settlement date as search parameters. And then, of course, your response type says, do I want data back as an XML or a CSV file? So from the guide you can see that really there's a huge amount of information available. The guide itself is 254 pages long, um, of which uh, you know the first 10 or 20 pages are really just the, uh, the index. Um, uh, so what we then find essentially is that um, we're going to hone in on two examples uh, to prove and to show the uh, so what you can do with the API um, and I'm going to use uh, UK temperature and wind data focusing primarily on the temperature uh, data as an example so if you head over to the API guide if you've got to load up you can see um, that the temperature data information section and um, each section is laid out in exactly the same way has a header section here dividing the high level information uh, there's information about the fields um, what you expect to get back uh, in the XML or CSV files um, and so it allows you essentially to structure uh, your database so anything that you're going to pass the data to after sourcing and allow you to structure the query that you're sending to Alexon. So for our temperature data and I'm working here using Python and XML although in the guide they do have other languages covered so you can see a JavaScript and C and so on and so forth. Um, and so we pass in essentially the uh, the name of the data we want to get back, so temperature in this case. We're passing an API key and then temperature has uh, two optional fields, from date and to date. Um, it obviously allows me then to uh, extract a date range from the uh, database. If I don't pass in those parameters and they are optional, then um, I get I think three months of data back just as a kind of a, a rolling three month data dump. Um, and if I then construct the API uh, URL, and we'll cover this in a second, um, I get an object back which looks like this. So the response object and then there's some metadata about the object itself, i.e. Yeah, reference code as it worked, HTTP code 200, so success. Um, I get some information about what I passed in. Um, for this worked example, I've just passed in the date range the 1st of January to the 20th of January, and so a query string uh, returns that back. Response header is of not great interest to us here, but it's just because the temperature data, just showing what we're getting back. The uh, the main body of interest is here in this the bound by his item tags. 
um, and the XML is always structured in this sense so you have the header responses and the main body then the item tags containing the data that we are interested in um, and so we can say the temperature okay we've got a date field here 1st of January 2nd January 3rd of January and so on and so forth temperature so the temperature reading for that day um, and then some other information here about normal temperature, reference ranges, highs and lows. So we can start to think about was this, you know, was this particularly a warm day? That we'll ask questions about what was the supply response, what was the demand side response, how did prices vary? You, know, you get the full idea. Um, and it allows us then to start to build some more, uh, more interesting uh, questions and models. I'm also going to use this example just to say, just to compare it with the peak wind generation. So if I come back here, this is the XML file from if I wanted to see when the peak wind generation, so this is a query that says well, for a particular day, uh, when is wind expected to generate the most? Uh, and, and you can see for particular days it goes through here. Um, and again we can see this exact same structure, so uh, response item, item, tags um, uh, for each of the uh, each of the data sets and records here. So I'm showing this because what we can do is if you were interested only in one data so, set, so for example I was only interested in um, temperature data, then we could simply write a little query, a little a parser which fixed these records. So it says, okay, find record type in item, find temperature, find high reference temperature data tag and just return this object which is fine but it becomes difficult if I'm rolling that out over 10 models, 20 models um, or as we saw um, in the guide uh, potentially 50, 60 or 100 different files. So what we can then do is say well knowing this structure we'll then just pass into an XML object or we'll source this object and then we'll do some interesting stuff with it that makes it possible to vary um, your output with only one one in one input. So let's go and have a look at that now and see what we've what we've uh, put together. I'll make this code available along with uh, GitHub, GitHub links and the actual source code source code um, on energyanalyst.co.uk. There'll be a link below or head to the website, um, search for this post, and um, uh, you'll be able to get the code. So I've written this little function here. So it's in Python, um, and we need three objects, uh, three I say three libraries. We're using URLib2. Uh, pandas because I'm interested in uh, using and uh, creating a pandas object for this XML and then an XML library um, LXML in this case um, and then uh, collections uh, and order dictionary uh, because I'm passing this XML into a dictionary object. So the general form is I want a function where I can pass in a report name, any optional parameters, report name, any optional parameters and then it just can return to me a data frame back. So the way we do this is um, we have an XML function up here and this very simply is I pass in the keyword arguments report from to date in this example and, and I've just put some text here to an example maybe with, with, with other parameters and because it's keyword argument you can pass in any number of parameters uh, named or unnamed um, and then I'm just going to go through here, I remove report because I define report not as a keyword argument um, as a search parameter but as a report name so that's why we just deal with it like this um, and then I'm going to ask LXML just to return or from the URL return and pass uh, this XML object and then this function just returns back to us essentially this entire XML object now if I was simply interested in just doing some of the XML, I might have a back-end process that handles XML, that's fine, I don't need to do the rest of this. I could save it off, I could analyze it, whatever it might be. Um, but because I want to get a uh, pandas data frame from it, um, I then just need to process it a little, little further. And I use an approach where I say, well, because the I know where in the XML file I need to go, it's always an item, so it's always response to it's always item, it's always the same tree, but of course the individual tags are different so in this case that you can see simply here the weather tags within the item are different to the temperature tags then I can't define uh, or it'd be very clumsy to say well if your response back is temperature do this if your response back is wind do this you end up with a vast amount of spaghetti code we simply say well because I know what 
I'm getting back, it's one of the arguments I already know, then go through, f navigate through response body, response list item, so get to that point, find my root tag, and then build a dictionary of all the tags. So this bit's just going to go through and keep an ordered dictionary. So I don't want the dictionary objects in Python um, are, are orderless, so I want to then specify the order to which it finds it so it keeps it the same. So when I then go back through get the children tags, or the children data, um, it matches up with the correct headers. Otherwise I'd end up with temperature with a date field, I'd end up with peak wind um, at uh, a date and so on and so forth, which I don't want. So we go through, we've, we build a dictionary object both for the tags and the keys, and then I return back, um, I should say, then I then format, I build a data frame here, and then I just return that pandas data frame to do whatever I want to do. Send it to Excel, uh, send it to SQL, um, do some further analytics on it, and uh, yeah, you, uh, send it off to uh, charting library, whatever it might be. Um, in this example, I just return the data frame, and I'm going to paste it or copy, I should say, to the clipboard uh, just a way to demonstrate to you guys what's going on. So if I run the code, in this case I'm going to ask keyword arguments are report, uh, should I say report is temperature, uh, I want to do it from the 1st to the 12th, uh, to the 20th of January, and I'm just going to send the data frame to the clipboard. And that's run, it's quick, and just to prove what the output we get, And here we are, here's the uh, data returned back in a tabular format which we can then process use and do some analytics on. Now you say the great advantage of doing the code this way around is, is now I've written the code once, I just need to change the parameters um, and I can get different data out. So I change that to be uh, wind forecast peak. Again, it's quick to run. So I come into here. And I paste it in, and you can see the codes work fine. We've still got we've still got a data table, but the uh, headers and the data is different. Um, and from that, we can then go back through and modify and update our code for anything these data sources that we want to get out simply and easily. And the code is support. And it's quick to run, um, and we're uh, we're all set to uh, start trading the UK power market. Okay, um, if you've got any questions, feel free to pop in the comments below um, or say head over to energyanalyst.co.uk. Um, you can find me on there um, and just respond to uh, or drop an email on there. All right, thank you very much. I hope this helped um, and uh, I'll uh, post another video soon. All right, bye.